Hi there! Today we're going to talk about fuel economy, the stuff that manufacturers tell us and the results that I give you in my reviews. Every now and then you ask me where do my results come from, so let me explain. If you watched any of my car reviews, you probably noticed that my results are usually way off from what the manufacturers claim. Nothing unusual about that, as real life results are on average 20-30% worse than lab results. Now, the question is why? Well, first of all, we have to take into account the fact that we live in different places, we drive at different times, we have different driving styles. I passed my driving test 20-something years ago, and Marek in 1998 is a less cautious driver than Marek in 2018. So my driving style changed as I matured, yes, I'm very mature now, but there's also more traffic these days. And speaking of more traffic, most cars we drive in Europe today are tested according to NEDC, or the New European Driving Cycle Test, but there's nothing new about it as the last update was made in 1997. NEDC is split into several test phases, which take from a couple of minutes to about a dozen minutes. The car is driven at different speeds and different gears, then it stops, then it drives again. But it's only around 22 kilometers in total. In the US, there is the EPA FTP 75 test procedure, which was last updated 10 years ago, and I won't dwell upon it because to be honest, I don't really know much about it, except that it's more relevant for US driving scenarios where there are many sort of long straight roads and less curvy roads, less traffic. As of September 2017, new cars undergo WLTP, or the World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure. WLTP takes into account three classes of vehicle depending on their power to weight ratio with more gears or more varieties of manual gearboxes these days because you can have a four, five, six, seven, uh, seven gear shifters, manual shifters. Uh, there is no specified gear for different speeds. Uh, WLTP calculates some sort of a perfect point for for shifting gears, so it's uh, it's a bit more complicated then. Uh, the test is about 10 minutes longer than NEDC, which is supposed to make it better, more realistic, I guess. And it is also performed at higher temperature, which is less optimal for use of, uh, for fuel consumption. Now, the other thing about the WLTP is that it also takes into account equipment which is installed in a car. So, a car will be heavier depending on the trim level and if it's heavier it's obviously going to be using more fuel. But I think that since car makers learned how to pass the NEDC tests, they will learn how to pass WLTP. At least that's what I think. However, I am interested to see how WLTP results will compare to my results. My results. Uh, for the last 10 years or so, I've been uh, reviewing, what, 70, 80 cars a year. And for about five years, when, I'm, when I have this channel, I'm employing this test procedure of mine. And um, this test procedure, let me tell you what it's all about. Let me just get out of this roundabout. So anyway, here's my highly unscientific test procedure. Like most of you, I drive pretty much the same place every day, so my daily routes are similar, the times are similar, traffic is similar, and within the few days I have before writing the script and recording the, the review, I usually drive two, three hundred kilometers, which is more or less 10 times as much as uh, a test car gets driven in a lab test. Driven, not really, it's not really driven, it's, it's a lab, so it's on rollers and stuff. Anyway, I'm trying to follow eco-driving principles and go with the flow of traffic and, uh, you know, I don't overtake if it's not necessary, especially if I'm going to slow down in a couple of hundred meters because I'm making a turn, so I'm not driving like an idiot. And I'm trying to predict the situation on the road to let the car coast for 
as long as it is possible. I make an exception for cars which are, for example, sporty. Sporty cars, yeah, you know, you have to have a bit of fun in them, and I think it should be taken into account when uh, calculating fuel economy for them. I mean, you're not buying a sports car to drive Miss Daisy in it, are you? Now, my test routes are more or less equally divided between the city, dual carriageways, and some B roads, giving me, I think, a good mix of what I consider a combined driving cycle. I realize my tests uh, are tests, basically, so it's not perfect. However, having driven several hundred cars over the years on the same roads in similar conditions, I am able to establish if and by how much real-life fuel economy is off from what manufacturers claim. Some car makers are closer to real-life results and some just optimize the car to pass the test. And then there is my subjective opinion, because I think 40% discrepancy in a smaller engine is cheating, whereas, let's say, 10% discrepancy in a larger engine could be a result of heavier traffic, adverse weather conditions, stuff like that. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments below. If you don't, also let me in the comments below. Now, sorry, this was a bit long, I'm sure, but uh, I thought you'd like to know how exactly I achieve my results and why they are different to what the manufacturer claims. And uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, today I'm driving a new Dacia Duster. And, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about this car, let me know in the uh, comment section below within the next two, three days from publishing of this video, because I'll try and uh, take your questions into consideration when writing the script for this car. Yeah, um, review of this car will be posted sooner or later, not too soon, because I have a couple of cars lined up and there are a couple of relatively hot premiers which need to go before that, but uh, yeah, we're gonna get to this car in about a month or a month and a half, so stay tuned for that. And now, as always, thanks for watching and uh, I will see you in the next one.